If you're working under the hood of a car and you're in a tight space, a flex head ratchet could be a game changer. So the question is, is an $18 flex head just as good as the one that cost $226? Well, let's find out. In the first test, we'll compare the working arc swing of the ratchets. Then we'll see which ratchets have the best build construction. We'll see which ratchets have the best back drag. Finally, we'll test the failure mode of each brand. At a very reasonable price of only $18 is this Duratec ratchet. The Duratec is made in China. The ratchet has 72 teeth and claims to have a 5 degree arc swing. Flex head tilts up to 180 degrees at any interval. Duratec claims that the ratchet can handle up to 195 foot pounds of torque. We're going to test that. The Duratec has 6 different positions 30 degrees apart. And the Duratec weighs 451.2 grams. Manufacturers use a lot of marketing information about arc swing and tooth count. They're trying to convince you that their ratchet is best for working in a tight space. So let's see how well the ratchets actually compare working within a 30 degree space. We'll see how many right to left passes it takes to spin one full 360 degree degree rotation. Gear slop, tooth count, handle width, and excessive tolerances are all factors. And the Duratec only has 72 teeth and seems to have a pretty sloppy gear set. And the Duratec completed one full 360 degree rotation and 24 back and forth passes. At a price of $24 is this DeWalt flex head ratchet. It has a 72 tooth gear system for a 5 degree arc swing. Just like the Duratec, the DeWalt has 180 degrees of rotation. Low profile directional lever. Ergonomic handle with anti-slip grooves for comfort and control. The DeWalt is made in Taiwan. And it's 428.9 grams for the DeWalt. And the DeWalt seems have a much more refined ratcheting mechanism than the Duratec. Even with only 72 teeth, it's making very good progress at about 17 degrees of progress with each pass. And the Dewalt takes the lead from the Duratec at only 20.5 passes. At a price of $27 is this Crescent brand. It's a 72 tooth ratchet that claims to have a 5 degree arc swing. Teardrop head for improved access. And the flex head and the Crescent rest in 9 different positions for a 20 degree spread between each position. The Crescent is made in Taiwan. And the Crescent's the heaviest yet at 480.3 grams. And the Crescent also has 72 teeth just like the Duratec and the Dewalt. And the Crescent performed the same as the Duratec at 24 back and forth passes for one complete rotation. At a price of $35 is this Cobalt brand. All the previous ratchets had 72 teeth, but the Cobalt has 90. Cobalt claims that the ratchet offers a 4 degree arc swing. The flex head design rotates 180 degrees. And the flex head on the Cobalt has 7 different preset positions. The Cobalt is made in Taiwan. And the Cobalt is very light at 333.4 grams. And the 90 tooth Cobalt has a very compact ratchet head design, but there's quite a bit of gear slop for a 90 tooth ratchet. And the Cobalt moves into a two way tie with the Dewalt at 20. 0.5 back and forth passes. At a price of $44 is this Icon ratchet which is sold at Harbor Freight. Icon claims that their 90 tooth gear to gear mechanism produces a tight 4 degree arc swing. It's a low profile 180 degree flex head. The Icon is made in Taiwan. The Icon weighs 439.4 grams. And the Icon claims to have an arc swing of just 4 degrees and is making very close to 20 degrees of progress with each pass. And the Icon performed very well and takes the lead from the Dewalt and the Cobalt at 18.2 passes. At a price of $50 is this Tecton brand. It's a 90 tooth ratchet that claims to have an arc swing of just 4 degrees. The flex head has 180 degrees in 9 different positions. To get to those hard to reach areas, Tecton claims to reduce the height, width, and the length of the head. The Tecton ratchet is made in Taiwan. And the Tecton weighs 433.2 grams. And the Tecton's gear set doesn't seem quite as refined as the Icon's. However, the Tecton is making around 19 degrees of progress with each pass. And the Tecton moves into second place behind the Icon at 19 strokes. At a price of $52 is this Gear Wrench 120 XP. Gear Wrench claims that this ratchet has 120 positions, giving this ratchet a 3 degree arc swing. It does this using double stack pawls. It claims it can deliver up to 180% of the ASME torque performance. The gear wrench is made in Taiwan. And the gear wrench 120 XP weighs 443.8 grams. And the gear wrench uses a dual pawl design to achieve a 120 position ratcheting mechanism. And the gear wrench moves into second place behind the Icon at 18.5 back and forth passes. At a price of $67 is this wearer brand. The swivel head locks into 5 positions at 0, 15, and 90 degree points left and right. The wearer has 72 teeth which works out to be around a 5 degree arc swing. The wearer is made in the Czech Republic. And the wear is a lot shorter than most of the other brands and it's also lighter at 312.6 grams. And the wearer's handle is way too bulky to work efficiently within a tight space. And the handle really hurt the ratchet's performance at 36 back and forth passes for one rotation. At a price of $67 is this Gear Wrench 90. 90 tooth gear delivers a 4 degree arc swing. Precision engineered high strength paw for increased durability. Locking flex head with 9 lock positions. It also has an unlocked option for adjustable access angle. The Gear Wrench is made in Taiwan. And the Gear Wrench 90 weighs 425.8 grams. And the Gear Wrench 90 has a gear set that seems very well designed and is making around 20 degrees of progress with each pass. And the Gear Wrench 90 moves into a two way tie for first place with the Icon at 18.2 passes. At a price of $75 is this Craftsman brand. Enclosed ratchet head to prevent dirt infiltration. The ratchet head articulates 180 degrees. The Craftsman has 96 teeth and claims a very impressive 3.75 degree arc swing. 
The Craftsman is made in Taiwan and is 493.3 grams for the Craftsman. And the Craftsman has a higher tooth count than most of the other brands and that's really helping it on this test. And the Craftsman is going to be very hard to beat at 16.3 passes. Very impressive. At a price of $121 is this also Tools brand. It's a 90 tooth ratchet designed to have a 4 degree arc swing. They claim it's designed for high torque performance. Completely engineered, fabricated and assembled in USA with 100% domestically sourced parts. And the Olsa ratchet weighs 422.5 grams. And the Olsa Tools has a very compact head making it very well designed to work in a tight space. And the Ulsa Tools Ratchet also has a very well designed gear set at 18.1 passes to move into second place behind the Craftsman. At a price of $142 is this stall wheel brand. It's an 80 tooth ratchet that claims to have a 4.5 degree arc swing. The ratchet head locks into four different positions. The stall wheel is made in Germany. 357.8 grams for the stall wheel. And the stall wheel's ratcheting mechanism only has 80 teeth but the gear set seems very well designed. For an 80 tooth gear set the stall wheel performed well at 19.5 passes. At a price of $165 is this Mac Tools brand. The locking flex at is 11 positions with approximately 180 degrees of flex. It's a 90 tooth ratchet that's supposed to have a 4 degree arc swing. The Mac Tools is made in USA. And the Mac Tools weighs 481.3 grams. And the Mac Tools is making just over 20 degrees of progress with each back and forth stroke. And the Mac Tools ratchet performed extremely well for a 90 tooth ratchet and moves into second place at 17.7 passes. At a price of $173 is this Snap-on ratchet. It's an 80 tooth ratchet that's supposed to have an arc swing of 4.5 degrees. Dual 80 technology ratchet design features features 80 tooth gear with 7 teeth in contact with the gear to provide strength and durability. The Snap-on is made in USA and is 434.5 grams for the Snap-on. Just like the stall wheel, the Snap-on also has 80 teeth. For an 80 tooth count, the Snap-on performed well at 20 passes but not nearly good enough to move into the lead. At a price of $183 is this Nepros brand. The Nepros is a 90 tooth ratchet that claims to have a 4 degree arc swing. The flex head on the Nepros offers around 180 degrees of range. The Nepros is made in Japan and the Nepros weighs 367.6 grams. And the Nepros Nepros has a very refined ratcheting mechanism, but the handle is way too large to work efficiently in a tight space. And the Nepros is finished at 21.5 passes. At a price of $226, the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Proto. It's a 90 tooth pair head flex head ratchet designed to have a 4.5 degree arc swing. It has neural bands on the handle for increased grip and slip resistance. The Proto is made in USA. And the Proto weighs 459.6 grams. And the Proto also has a very refined 90 tooth gear set and a much smaller handle compared to the Nepros. And the Proto performed very well at 18 passes. When working in a tight space, ratchet efficiency makes a huge difference and the Craftsman is the most efficient in the lineup at 16.3 passes. Mac Tools finished in second at 17.7 and Proto finished in third at 18. Let's compare the build quality of the flex head and the handle using the dial indicator. And the craftsmanship on the Duratec ratchet is a bit of an issue at almost a half inch of slop. And the build quality of the flex handle to the head pivot area is much better with the DeWalt at 0.03 inches. In other words, the DeWalt has 90% less slop. And the Crescent has about 8 times as much handle slop as the DeWalt at almost a quarter inch. And the Cobalt has 0.17 inches of handle slop which is good enough to move into second place behind the DeWalt. And the Icon performed even better than the Cobalt at 0.11 inches to move into second place behind the DeWalt. And the Tecton performed almost as well as the Icon at 0.126 inches to move into third place behind the Icon. And the Gear Inch 120 is very close to the same as the Tecton at 0.124 inches. And the Weira is designed to prevent slot between the handle and the head. And the Gear Inch 90 is a lot better than average at less than one tenth of an inch. And the Craftsman barely edges out the Gear Inch 90 at 0.083 inches. And the Ulsa Tools has done a great job at only 0.017 inches to move into second place behind the Weira. And the stall wheel also performed a lot better than average at 0.054 inches. Unfortunately, the Mac Tools is a little bit too loose for a premium tool ratchet at 0.154 inches. And the Snap-on performed well at 0.078 inches, which is a little bit better than the Craftsman and the Gear Wrench 90. And the Nepros did a very good job and moves into a two-way tie with the Ulsa Tools at 0.017 inches. And the Proto performed just a little bit better than the Snap-on at 0.075 inches. Handle slop reduces efficiency, especially in a tight space, and the wearer finished on top in this category. However, the Ulsa Tools and the Nepros tied for second place at 0.017 inches. A ratchet with a lot of back drag really makes removing and installing fasteners in tight spaces a challenge at times. If there's enough space, adding resistance to the socket using finger pressure allows the socket to advance, but sometimes that's not an option. I'll be using a 7 8 inch socket, fishing line, and a scale to measure the back drag. And the Duratec performed well at 215 grams. And the Dewalt has a much tighter ratcheting mechanism, and that hurt it on this test at 396 grams. And the Crescent's gear set seems pretty loose like the Duratex, 226 grams of back drag.
And the Cobalt performed very well in this test at 192 grams and moves into the lead. And the Icon gear set is pretty tight and it has 298 grams of back drag. Just like the DeWalt, the Tecton's gear set is pretty tight. And it's 389 grams of back drag for the Tecton. And the gear wrench performed a little bit better than average at 266 grams. And the Weir did very well at 194, which is good enough to move into second place behind the Cobalt. And the Gear Wrench 90 performed almost the same as the Gear Wrench 120 at 296 grams. And the Craftsman has by far the best working arc swing, but it has way too much back drag at 686 grams. And the Oso Tools is compact, has a great working arc swing, and only 219 grams of back drag. Very impressive. And the Stall Wheel performed a little bit better than average at 289. And the Mac Tools has a great working arc swing but quite a bit of back drag at 447 grams. And the Snap-on performed about the same as the stall wheel at 299 grams. And the Knee Pros performed about the same as the Snap-on at 296. And the Proto has just a little bit more back drag than the Snap-on and the Knee Pros at 333 grams. A ratchet with low back drag can really make a huge difference in many situations and the Cobalt and the Wear performed extremely well at under 200 grams of back drag. And the Duratec, Ulsa Tools, and Crescent also performed very well in the low 200s. If the hands are greasy, it can be very difficult to change directions with a stiff directional lever. And it takes 338 grams or about three quarters of a pound of force to switch directions with the Duratec. And the directional switch on the DeWalt is very stiff and it takes 788 grams or 1.7 pounds of force. And it's very easy to change directions with the Crescent at 204 grams. And the Cobalt performed about the same as the Duratec at 322 grams. And the Icon moves into second place behind the Duratec at 297. Very much like the DeWalt, the Tecton is pretty stiff at 588 grams. And the Gear Inch 120 moves into the lead over the Crescent at 199 grams. And the Wearer uses a much different setup and it's easy to rotate at only 199 grams. And the Gear Inch 90 also performed very well at only 238 grams. And the Crescent takes a little bit more force than average at 396 grams. And the directional switch on the Ulsa takes quite a bit of force at 589 grams. And the stall wheel is pretty easy to work with at 263 grams. And the Mac Tools requires a little bit more force than average at 488 grams. And the Snap-on takes even more force than the Mac Tools at 534. And the Knee Pros really struggled on this test at 829 grams. And the Proto takes a little bit more force than most of the other brands at 408. So the gear rinse in the wearer came out on top at only 199 grams. The Crescent also performed very well at only 204 grams. Head size has a huge impact on whether or not a ratchet can be used in a tight space. And the Cobalt has the most compact side-to-side -side ratchet head at only 26.37 millimeters. Stallwell is also very compact at 28.26 and also tools 28.45 millimeters. Front to back head size is also a factor to consider and the Gear Wrench 90 is the most compact at only 12.15 millimeters. Cobalt finished in second at 12.2 millimeters and also tools 12.86. So taking into consideration both side to side and front to back dimensions, the Cobalt is the most compact at 321.7 square millimeters. Also tools 365.9 and Tecton 394.6. To test the failure load of the ratchets, I'll be using a Proto Torque Wrench tester which is accurate down to one-tenth of a foot-pound. And it's a snap, crackle, and pop for the Duratec with a peak force of only 228.4 foot-pounds. And a pivot pin broke first and then bent the handle neck joint. Both paws and the main gear are still in good shape. And the DeWalt is a lot stronger than the Duratec, finally breaking at 269.5 foot-pounds. And the 3 8 inch drive is the point of failure. A look inside the ratchet and the paw is still in great shape, but there's some damage to the main gear. Instead of one loud pop, the Crescent sounded off three separate times as it experienced failure inside the ratchet head at 252.8 foot-pounds. And the paw broke and there's also extensive damage with the main gear. And the Cobalt is a lot more compact than most of the other brands and size seems to make a huge difference. And the handle on the Cobalt broke at 169.5 foot-pounds. Inside the ratchet head, the switch mechanism also failed. The pawl and the main gear are still in good shape. And the Harbor Freight's Icon can handle some serious torque. And the drive finally broke at 287.3 foot-pounds to move into the lead. The handle did bend, but 287 foot-pounds is a lot of force. The pawl and the gear teeth are still in good shape. And the Tecton made it to 265.8 foot-pounds when things went from happy to double snappy. The handle is a source of failure and the rashing mechanism held up just fine. And the Gear Inch 120 XP is a little bit stronger than average, finally letting go at 277.9 foot-pounds. And the drive broke, but both paws and the main gear teeth are still in good shape. And the wearer let go a little bit sooner than average at 256.1 foot-pounds. And the 3 8 inch drive is a source of failure. And the Gear Inch 90 is very close to the same strength as the Gear Inch 120 at 276.6 foot-pounds. The main gear and the pawl are still in great condition. And the Craftsman proved to be incredibly strong with the drive finally snapping at 295.2 foot-pounds. Very impressive! The handle did experience a small bend. And the Ulsa Tools ratchet is stronger than average with the handle finally breaking at 279.6 
foot-pounds. And all sorts of parts went flying off the star wheel when it finally let go at 252.2 foot-pounds. The lock for the flex head position, the quick release mechanism, and the drive all broke during the test. And the Mac Tools ratchet gave up a lot sooner than expected at only 206 foot-pounds. The handle pivot pin broke and the handle became bent. And the snap-on snapped off at 292.9 foot-pounds. Very impressive! While the ratcheting mechanism still functions properly, there is some damage to one of the paws. And the Nepros threw in the towel a lot sooner than most of the competition at only 231.4 foot-pounds. And the drive was a source of failure. While the Paul is in good shape, the main gear did experience some wear and tear. And the Proto's drive snapped at 263.3 foot-pounds. The Paul in the main gear survived the test without damage. If you're looking for a ratchet that can handle a lot of torque, the Craftsman came in on top at 295.2 foot-pounds. The Snap-on performed well at 292.9 and Icon 287.3 foot-pounds. So which ratchet is the best? And the Ulsa Tools dominated the show down with an average finish of 4.8. It's a very good ratchet and offers a complete package. While the directional switch is a little stiff, it's a relatively minor detail. And the Ulsa Tools beat the Gearance 90T in all but one category. The Gearance 90T flex head is on the left and the Gearance 90 ratchet is on the right. And the regular ratchet is a lot smaller and much more refined compared to the flex head tool. The Gearance 90T is definitely my favorite ratchet of all time. Gearance can easily win this showdown if they adapted the smaller ratchet for a flex head style tool. I get asked the question all the time whether or not tool manufacturers reach out to me. Actually they do and they're using the reviews to help improve their products which is a big plus. All the videos in this channel including this one are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.